So the other um, thing that can cause hypercholesterolemia is genetic hypercholesterolemia. This is far, far rarer. Um, I don't think I've ever actually seen a patient with a diagnosis of genetic hypercholesterolemia, and the more common name for a genetic hypercholesterolemia is familial hypercholesterolemia, FH for short. And by the way, when someone has a diagnosis of idiopathic hypercholesterolemia, we usually just drop the idiopathic and just put hypercholesterolemia or too high cholesterol level within their notes. We don't write out the full name for it. Um, so familial hypercholesterolemia, much, much rarer. You are born with it. It is a genetic condition. So there is a problem with um, one of the genes within your uh, DNA. Uh, specifically, I believe it is the LDL receptor gene. So there, you know, in your DNA, there are genes that make proteins called LDL receptors. You have two copies of these genes. And if you have mutations in those genes that mean that they produce faulty LDL receptors, uh, then your body cannot handle cholesterol properly because that protein, the LDL receptor, is involved in handling cholesterol. It, indeed, it's involved in taking cholesterol out of the bloodstream. So if it is broken, uh, then your cholesterol can go far too high and the cause of this is genetic and cannot be fixed at present. Um, you know, we do not have a way of fixing the genetic problem and fixing the protein so that it works. We may well do in the future, but at present that doesn't exist. Now, um, so you're born with this, you will have it lifelong, and you will have far too high cholesterol level. Now, as I say, this is much, much rarer. What sort of conditions would you think of this? So if you had a patient who has too high cholesterol, there are two major things that would make me think, could this be familial hypercholesterolemia as opposed to idiopathic? And again, I want to stress that practically, indeed, every single patient I have ever encountered with hypercholesterolemia, it has been a diagnosis of idiopathic hypercholesterolemia. I am yet to meet a patient with a diagnosis of familial hypercholesterolemia. But the sort of things that would make me think about this is if I was diagnosing hypercholesterolemia in someone very young and very thin, so if I had an athletic 20-year-old male who I had found their cholesterol somehow, why I was even doing this test, I don't know, but if I had measured their cholesterol and it came back too high, that is the sort of scenario where I would consider maybe this person has familial hypercholesterolemia and maybe they need to be referred to one of the specialists for genetic testing for that condition. The other situation that I would consider whether the cause for the hypercholesterolemia could be genetic is if the hypercholesterolemia was really, really bad. So, we have said that hypercholesterolemia is having a cholesterol above 5, but of course there are different severities, so how much above 5 are you? So I'm going to divide the ranges into different things. So 5 to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 9, and then greater than 9. So these have differing um, prevalences. So this range here, 5 to 6 is the most common, 6 to 7 is then slightly less common, 7 to 8 is more rare, 8 to 9 is extremely rare, above 9, I've never seen anyone with a cholesterol above 9. But this is the other setting where I would jump straight to it being familial hypercholesterolemia. If I saw someone with a cholesterol that was greater than 9, and as I say, I've yet to see a patient with a cholesterol that high, I would instantly think there must be a genetic component to this. This person needs genetic testing for familial hypercholesterolemia. Um, so that's the other uh, scenario where I would consider doing genetic testing rather than just concluding that the cause of the hypercholesterolemia is idiopathic. Just to give you a bit more information about these different ranges, so 5 to 6 is the most common, and it's 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 not great. Ideally, you should be on a statin if you have a cholesterol between 5 and 6, but it's not that bad, so I'm going to write OK by it. And it's the sort of range where we can we can turn a blind eye to it. As I say, I, the ideal situation is that the patient will agree to be put on a statin and will take the statin reliably. However, um, a lot of people don't want to take statins. They're very, very famous, and the side effects of them have been made very famous. And we'll talk about the side effects, hopefully, later on in the video. Uh, but the side effects have been made very famous. Uh, they will most likely have friends who are on statins, and their friends might have told them stuff about how awful these drugs are and the side effects. 
and therefore a lot of people don't want to take statins. They have preconceptions about taking statins and they don't want to take one. And if their cholesterol is in the range 5 to 6, so let's say it's 5.7, that's kind of the range where if they're really against taking a statin, you can sort of turn a blind eye to a cholesterol of that level and maybe instead just advise them to maybe lose weight if they're a little bit overweight. So 5 to 6 is not that bad. 6 to 7 is worse, obviously. Um, it is more the sort of range where you can't really turn a blind eye to it if it's above 6. Uh, so 6.5, for instance, bang in the middle, that is not a good cholesterol level to have, and really you do need to be on a statin at that level. And both of these ranges, 5 to 6 and 6 to 7, are very, very common. I see people all the time with cholesterols within this range and all the time with cholesterols in this range. 7 to 8 is, frankly, bad. You absolutely need to be on a statin. If you're not on a statin, you are really putting yourself at risk of cardiovascular disease. Again, it's not that uncommon, though. You do see a lot of people with cholesterols within the range 7 to 8 who just have idiopathic essential hypercholesterolemia rather than genetic hypercholesterolemia. 8 to 9 is much rarer. It's very bad if you've got a cholesterol above 8. Um, you do occasionally, however, see patients who, where the diagnosis is quite obviously idiopathic hypercholesterolemia, where it is up in the 8. So I've seen recently a patient with a cholesterol of 8.2, uh, and there was no doubt in my head that it was idiopathic rather than genetic. Uh, so it's not that, it's not, it's not common, but it's not frighteningly, you know, it's not hugely rare to have a cholesterol up here. Above 9, I, as I said, I've never seen anyone with a cholesterol above 9. So those are the sort of different ranges, how common they are and how bad they are. So above six is, is where we're starting to get quite bad. Five to six is kind of this range where it's not brilliant, but it's not a disaster at that level.